All right, let's sit here. Do, 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 do. All right. Well, this is how it's going to be. It's the quality is going to stink, but at least it seems to be working. So uh, I don't want any more robo voice and everything else. So. All right, so anyway, I uh, got the Steam Deck all reformatted. And uh, the 512 that I installed earlier in the week is now is now uh, reformatted back to uh, system settings out of the box. And what we're going to do today is Micro Center just got a bunch of the one terabytes in. So I figured I had some gift cards and a coupon. It brought this down about uh, 15 bucks and this is a one terabyte i'm going to throw this one in instead um, plus since doing the other video i've learned a few things and uh let's see here so first things first what we're going to do is the important thing is we are going to shut this off Will this work? Oh, here you go. Let's do this. Let's do Shut down. Confirm. For all intents and purposes, the quality doesn't seem too horrible. So I've got my um, thumb drive with Steam OS on it. Uh, we have our uh, screwdriver and some other sort of tools. We got our one terabyte drive. And the first thing we're going to do is now that that's powered off is we have our SD card here. We're going to Get that out of here. I have trouble popping these things. So I'm just gonna do one of these little things here. I'll just pop it right out for me. And uh, yeah, let's put that up there for now. Um, so, okay. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to take off, there are uh, eight screws on the back of this total. And they're different screws. They use the same, uh, you can use the same screwdriver size, uh, but the um, they are two different types of screws. Uh, these outside four here are longer than the inside four here. And you have to be very careful because you can strip them. So let's get this there. I'm going to start with these outside ones. I'm using a, um, if you have one of these iFixit kits, I'm using uh, the number one screw right here. I don't know if that applies to other screws, but in this particular, it's a popular kit. It's a uh, number one. So I'm going to take these out. Very slowly. So I've already had this thing open once. So I don't want to uh, overdo this too much. Clearly, this this will be the last and final time I'll be taking this apart. Uh, what I would recommend is you uh, separate the screws into their own little, you know, little tray or whatever you have nearby, just so that you remember where they go. Taking my time taking these out. I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to strip anything here. The thing's on pretty well in general. So I wouldn't even want to put them back in too tight either. I'm trying to do this so everybody can kind of see at the same time here. Sorry, I'm getting in the way, but. Okay, and uh, now we're, we got these four out. We're going to work on the middle four. Once again, if you are doing this for the first time and you have a uh, micro SD installed, 
please do not forget to uh, uninstall the micro SD from the bottom of your unit uh, because when you take it apart there is a good chance you will split the thing in half which is what I've seen a few YouTubers do and it was pretty stupid because I don't know about you but I have a 512 and uh, I really wouldn't want to snap that in half some people have bigger as you can see here these screws here from the outside are a little longer than the other ones here see now that didn't take long for a new private dating to show up huh <laughs> yeah sure yeah that's that's my um that's my ad revenue right there so <laughs> All right, uh, where were we? Yes, as you can see, the outside ones, and these are the inside ones there. Um, the outsides are a lot longer, about double the size, I'd say. So this time, I want to make sure I remember to uh, make sure the, the volume is... Uh, not the volume, geez, the power button. We have all the power cleared out. And we got this one left down here. I didn't put these in super tight the last time I did this. So, all right. So we've got all the screws out of the back of this. And the next step now is to uh, separate the two halves of the unit, chassis, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I see people say you could probably use like a credit card or something, but this iFixit kit comes with these uh, little plastic um, spudgers. So what we're going to do is uh, everybody says to start on the right side of the system where the right controller is. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to shove this in here like this. And I'm sure if you had decent fingernails, you can probably do this with your fingernails but we're just going to go in here like this and we're going to separate I think this is arguably the worst part of doing this whole process right here is opening this up it opens up pretty easy it opened up pretty easy the last time and I'm just going to do this and separate the two halves apart just like that Came apart pretty easily. I've seen some people it takes a little longer. There's these little clips around the edges. You got to be very careful. You don't want to snap them. So we're going to flip this back around this way. Well, <clears throat> this is the way we started from on the right side. So I would just start from the right, work your way down. And kind of just go like that and at the top stall on. Once you clear these clips here, it seems like it just kind of popped right off, you know. So now we got to spin it around this way. So we have a lot more. You know, um, I saw somebody had a really good idea. I think I'm going to do that this time. Uh, where they're using their Steam Deck uh, case to lay this in. But I don't know. See, it's taking up so much space. Yeah, screw it. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Some people are, they take it and they put their switch in here. Switch. <laughs> their Steam Deck in here. And they just do the, the mod this way. But I think for the sake of the camera and everything, I want to keep it kind of clear. Well, the clips are, here, let me see if you can see them in here. In this, in this um, well, hopefully you can see it. Let's see. You can see there's one here. Okay. And you got one there. And you got one down there, you got one down there, and this is at the uh, bottom of the unit. And you've got some clips right there, right there on the sides, and you got some on this side over here as well, right in there and here. 
And at the top, I don't see so much the clips. So it looks like they're mostly around the bottom, towards the bottom perimeter here, you know. So, uh, all right. So the next step is we are going to have to remove this plate here. And because um, underneath this plate is where the um, SSD is. And this is the battery. And this is plate here. Now we've already had this apart before because when I was in here before. So you've got a battery down here, or excuse me, you got a screw down here, this bottom. And you got a screw up here. There's a screw down there too. But I don't think there is. I don't have any leftover screws from my day last time. But anyway, there's a screw in underneath this metal piece here, this little piece of foil. Yeah, there was no screw there before. Because there's three screws on the back here that you have to take off. One, two, and three underneath. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my tweezers out. Because I don't want to... It's already kind of beat up, isn't it? Sorry, I know this is bad camera angle. Let me try this way. And we're going to pull this screw, expose the screw out, so we're going to pull the screw out. Just pull it out enough there that you can. Now they say if you, you take this off, then you're you're um, going to be uh, basically voiding your warranty. But we need to get to the SSD under here. You know, I just realized too. Um, I think I'm going to need scissors to open this other SSD. So let me go and cut open real quick have it ready So, we still alive. Yellow. Terabyte one. All the area over there. Ugh. I think we're still off, right? Okay. All right, let's move these screws out of here. Let me get this one out first. Now, just like the uh, back plate screws. These screws also seem to be of a different size. So that's the middle one. And you got these two little ones down here. These are a little smaller. I'm going to put them kind of in the corner up there just so I can keep track of which is which. Now 
it's really weird because they don't have screws on these two points here only these three uh, this should just pop right off like so And here is our uh, SSD, which you're going to be uh, replacing. As I said, this is the 512 that I put in earlier in the week. And now um, I'm going to be taking this battery out first, or unplugging this battery part. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. So we're going to take this, let's unplug this battery. You can just tug at this battery a little bit and it should pop right out. It did last time anyway, a little wiggle. There you go. And, uh, okay, so now we're going to do that situation we had before. Uh, I was told that I need to give it a little bit of a, I guess, discharge the remaining power in the unit so I'm going to go up here and I'm going to hit the power button and we'll see what happens I don't see anything lighting up so I think we're good nothing lit up power is undone from the battery so I'd say we're pretty good there huh Shane we're good okay all right so we're going to go down here. We're going to unscrew the SSD from the board. So while we're doing this, a real quick shout out to Monroe World. Shane here, who's part of the chat. He does a very thorough uh, channel for Steam Deck, not just Steam Deck, but he does a lot of Steam Deck involved videos, and they are very helpful, especially for new users, and uh, anybody who wants to really take a deep dive into the mechanics of what you can do with the Steam Deck, from moving files back and forth and so much uh, more. So uh, be sure to check him out over on the Monroe World channel on YouTube. He's certainly a lot more of an expert than I am. All right, so now we have, as soon as you unscrew this, this is going to pop up, just like any old uh, M2 uh, card you may have, M.2, whatever you want to call it, in your PC. And we're just going to wiggle this out. Now, on top of this, there is a heat shield. Uh, do not throw this away. Do not you know, pull it apart or, or do anything crazy with it. We're just going to pull the sleeve right off of this existing one. So this will apply if you're doing a uh, 64, this is a 64 gig model, um, and you, this is really the one you want to do this uh, mod with. Uh, this is the 512 card I put in here the other week, and the sleeve will slip right over top. Um, I'm going to lay that over here for now. And now we are going to take the one terabyte, and we are going to slip that over top of it. I'm going to do it the way it was. I think it was this way, right? It's going to slide that right over top, like so. Boom. And then we are going to put this right in here, like so. And we are going to take our big screw right here. And we are going to screw this right on down. So it gives a little bit of resistance. You don't want to do too crazy there. Okay, and the next step we're going to do is we are going to plug the battery back in. I don't get much to work with here. Now the power light did come on for a fleeting second there. I seem to recall it did that before. Looks 
like it's in there. I see so many people having trouble pulling that thing out, but I haven't had any issues. Um, now we're going to put this plate back on. Looks like it must have some heat sinks on here or something. And we're just going to line that right up here. Like so. Just do everything very slow and carefully. And it just kind of lays on top like that. All right. So the big one is this separate one I have up here. And I'm going to put that one on first. That goes right here in the middle. And we will cover that back over, like so. I don't think there's anything you can do about making that look pretty again. Once you bend it, I mean, it's like tin foil. So, I mean, once you bend it, it's it's bent for good, I think. Um, let me put these away. I'm a stickler about putting tools away that I'm done with, so I don't have a bunch of uh, clutter. And, um, okay, we got these two other screws up here we're going to... Two tiny guys. I highly recommend, if available, uh, to use a magnetic screwdriver. Just makes things a little easier. And I wouldn't overdo the tightness. Just I would do it enough until you, you get that resistance going. These things are very tiny. Okay, so this is back on. The plate's back on. The battery is plugged in. The M2 is installed. Um, I think we're good. We're going to close it back up. Here's the back. And it should just kind of snap right on. You know, it's funny. I had a, I noticed I had a little bit of an issue with my, um, my, which one was it? I'm looking at it the other way. My left thumb stick here, or this guy here. It felt like it just, felt like he was sticking a little bit but it turns out it's a common issue and uh, the problem is it, it some of them people are complaining that it like rubs against the inner, inner side of these um, the edges of the of the frame all right so we're gonna stick this back on and it should just kind of click back on from what I remember there you go Pretty cool. And I'll tell you what, it's pretty solid as well. Let's go around the edges. And we're just going to close this up. Nice. Nice. Now, um, when I was put opening this up, um, once again, you don't want to use anything um, metal. You don't use metal or anything when you open this thing up. You want to make sure you're using a. Uh, you want to make sure you're using um, something plastic, uh, even the side of a credit card, or if you have these iFixit kits. Once again, because if you use metal, like um, you know, if you took like a edge of a screwdriver or something, you know, say like one of these guys here, okay. You took one of these guys. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna scratch the hell out of this and dig out the plastic. You don't want to do that, okay. All right, so next step we're going to do is we're going to put the screws back in. And I think I'll start with the little guys. Once again, the little guys go into the four middle parts of the deck here. And once again, we are not going to overdo this because they will strip if you're not careful. You just want to go and screw in just to when you get some resistance. I'll be honest with you. I mean, this this thing's already held tight pretty 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 well as it is, and even without the screws, so the thing is not going to flop apart anytime soon, as far as I can tell. And I'm weird. I like to do the opposite ends first. So if I do a, a left corner, I'll do a right corner next. So I heard a little bit of a click there. You gotta watch. Go back down here. Go 
and go back up here. Like that one seems like it's down more. Whatever. All right, and uh, we're going to do the outside batch. Once again, these outside ones are longer. They also seem to go in pretty quick as well because they're hitting the bottom faster, it seems. And finally, go down here. Okay. All right, so we should be all set to go. Um, this thing's pretty fully charged as well. I saw people um, talking about how you should discharge it down to a certain um, charge, but to me that, that seems like a crazy idea because uh, it's going to take some time to set the software up and you want to make sure unless you're, oh, you can't plug it in because you're going to have this thing in there. So you're going to definitely want to make sure you have some charge going so you're able to, uh, you know, get the software going. So now the next and final step is to turn on the system and uh, we're going to install Steam OS via this flash drive uh, that I loaded Steam OS onto. And uh, I'm using this uh, USB C to USB A uh, dongle that I grabbed from uh, Micro Center for about, I don't know, four bucks or so. I thought this one was kind of cool because it doesn't just jut out, it's got a little give on it, so it won't hopefully weigh it down. So we're going to shove this into the uh, USB-C port. And now, if I recall, Gene, if you're still watching, it's volume down and power on. Let's see. I think that was my problem before. When I did this, I had some issues because there's no nothing lighting up up here. The light's off and it didn't even flicker. All I heard was a sound and, and nothing happened. It was a dark screen. So I was under the impression I did something wrong. It didn't boot up. But here you just have to wait. That's the problem. All right, so from this menu, we're going to have a option here. This is the boot screen in the BIOS. And this is showing you the uh, USB-C. I'm sorry about the picture quality here, guys. I apologize. I wish I could. I, I spent so much time trying to get the other method to record live going that I ended up just losing a lot of time in the process. So we're sticking with YouTube live and it's crappy quality. So I apologize. Okay, so we're in the BIOS. You can see here, this is the thumbstick up top here. And it's being listed here in the BIOS as a uh, boot option. So to select it, we can just hit A. And now up here, you'll see the thumb drive has got some activity. It's got Steam OS on it. <laughs> nice psycho yeah so psycho uh crazy me i ran out and bought a one terabyte drive from micro center they just got them in stock i had some christmas gift cards left over so i figured screw it i'm just gonna go for it and hopefully this will be the last time i'm opening this thing up things went a little smoother this time though fortunately
Probably because I know what I'm doing now. I mean, we're only a half hour into the video. I'm already installing the uh, OS, whereas last time I think I was still trying to figure out how to boot the thing up. So this is the weird part because the uh, first I didn't know what that was. But here it turns out the screen's vertical. Yeah, well, this time I went and discharged the power as well. That was just a step that I didn't think much about. So as you can see, we have some activity here. It's still moving along. But our next option should be to choose what we want to do. In terms of um, re-imaging and reinstall. And this is the part I always get mixed up on. I think we want to re-image it, correct? Is that right, Gene? If I remember? I don't know why. I always have a bonehead moment here. Which option I want to choose. And I've already looked this up. It drives me crazy. And it's not even late at night. Okay, so it looks like we want to reinstall. Is that it? Reimage. Okay, yeah, it is reimage. This uh, this uh, action will reimage the Steam Deck. This will personally just permanently, excuse me, destroy all data on your Steam Deck and reinstall Steam OS. This can't be undone. Please. Choose to proceed only if you wish to clear and reimage this device. Do you wish to proceed? Yes. Okay, so it's going to do a bunch of funky stuff down here. The drive light is still buzzing along, and there it goes. So this is the part that's excruciating because it takes forever to do. I wonder if I can... Um... See, I'm trying to figure out if the light... I don't think the light from my... This light will, that light might be a little more obnoxious. Let's see. Let's hold, hold it up. So if the light's not hitting it, yeah, there you go. It's a little better. Hey now, Alex. Thanks for jumping in. It's funny, uh, Psycho, those, um, this $10 uh, five below uh, units, uh, somebody was in the comments saying that they are sold out. I mean, it looks like on the website they're sold out. But I'm wondering if they are even, um, maybe they were pulled from the market due to their legality issues. Did you start off with the 64? Yeah, this was the 64 gig model. And the last time I was streaming, uh, what you were here before, I was installing the uh, 512 model that I had gotten off eBay. It was one of those ones that, you know, they pull from a Surface tablet or something. But um, now, today, uh, overnight, I guess yesterday or whatever, because they weren't there the other day, uh, the local micro center, I have a micro center about 20 minutes from here, and they had gotten 24 of the uh, terabyte, one terabyte uh, inland brand that, uh, 2230s in stock. So, um, they're selling them for 139 but if you're a new customer, you can do a new customer, uh, $15 coupon. I'm not a new customer, but I used my wife's uh, cell phone number to get the coupon. 
So that knocked fifteen dollars off. And yeah, Micro Center is great in a clinch. I mean, it's essentially the last of the brick and mortar computer stores out there, really. I mean, now the fries is gone. Um, I don't really consider Best Buy a computer store. They're basically an electronics appliance store, in my opinion. I mean, they have computers and they have a little bit of everything. But Micro Center is a true computer store. I mean, you can just go buy every part you need for a PC. Boom, boom, boom. Fill your cart up. And I see people do it all the time. They get the cart. They throw the motherboard in there, the CPU, the GPU, the RAM, everything. Power supplies. And uh, they build their whole computers. And it's pretty cool when you go up there and you see the kids up there. The young guys are up there with their dads and they're picking out parts to build their first computer. It's pretty cool. It's a great store, especially if you just want to run up and you need something in a, like I said, in a clinch. Like these little thumb drives here, they work pretty well. They're pretty cheap. And so far, so good. It's it's doing its thing, just like before when I did the 512. Re-imaging complete. Proceed to reboot the system there. Cancel. Okay, proceed. Uh, this thumb drive is a 64 gig. I got a two pack of them at Micro Center. They're like on sale for $9.99. So $5 for a 64 gig. The 16 gigs are like three or so. Um, yeah, dude, this, this whole, this whole process this time is going much quicker. I can't explain it. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what the deal is, but I do know last time I kept powering down or powering on, excuse me, and pushing down on the volume button at the same time. And I wasn't getting anything on the screen and I was stuck there for a few minutes. So that might've been not very helpful in getting things uh, going. Um, I thought I was doing something wrong, like I said. So maybe this time I just did it once and done because I kind of knew what to expect. Yeah, they, they have pretty good, um, their micro SDs are, are pretty reasonable as well. It's their own branded ones. And I know there is a bit of a, a downside with some of their micro SDs because they, um, they seem to be formatted, under formatted. Yeah, possibly, Shane. Okay, look, that was it. We're done. That was pretty quick. I mean, what I did this, I think I, I streamed for oh, what, an hour and a half or so last time. And what are we at here? Less than 40 minutes. We're 38 minute mark here. And uh, here, we're, all, we're done. This is great. Uh, so let me pull this guy out. And um, I'm going to reinsert the SD card back in. This is my 512. I think it goes this way, right? Or is it the other way? Yeah, it's the other way. It's always hard to tell which way it goes. Maybe, right? Is this right? Yeah, there you go. Where's that, where's that spudger at? I have trouble getting my fingers into these things when they're so tight. There you go. All right. I'm also a little more awake this time, so I think that's helping. Okay, so we're going to uh, let's get this going here. Let's see. Will this give me a Steam menu yet? I guess not. I guess you got to set the thing up first, huh? Oh, that's right. The buttons don't work. That's right. When you first do this, it's not going to give me the size, is it? No. Okay. I forgot. Now, uh, I forgot we don't have the controls right away. That was freaky. We got to use the touch screen. Uh, and I am on the East Coast, so we're going to go Eastern Standard. And I am going to put in my Wi-Fi information without anybody watching. Uh, 
All right, connection successful. And we're gonna do continue. Okay, so now we're getting a, I assume this is the update that we were having trouble with before. I know that was a big issue at the time. Remember, Shane, you were saying even on, on the Reddit, uh, the subreddit people on Christmas Day were complaining. It's like they couldn't update their Steam decks or something of that nature. Um, and some people had a tether and stuff. and It's crazy. Yeah, thanks, Psycho. I appreciate it. Um, I love doing this kind of stuff. It's just the second time around, I know what to expect. So it's obviously a lot easier. And um, I highly recommend anybody do this. I, I mean, I don't even know why they sell the 64 gig model. But uh, I think this is the way to do it. You buy the 64 gig model. And you throw a, a 50, a 512 or a one terabyte drive in there. And you're still under what Steam will charge you for the 512 model. I mean, unless you really care about the etched screen and the upgraded case, which doesn't really look that much more upgraded. Um, I think it's cool that they even include the case, quite frankly. I think that's neat. Uh, I've seen the etched screen looks okay, I think, but... I did see a comparison video and it doesn't seem to be as bright and as vivid probably because it's almost like an anti-glare protection has been put on top of it. So I, between the two, I definitely prefer this screen anyway. So it, it's not even, it's kind of a moot point, I guess, at this point. So I think what's going on now is we're getting the latest and greatest uh, Steam upgrade. And as soon as this is done, we are going to go in and we are going to confirm our storage properties. Plus, I also need to reformat the SD card. And then from there, I'm going to do this off video, but I'm going to go and bring back up Mr. Monroe World's videos here, uh, Shane's videos, and I'm going to re-enable the SSHS and uh, so I can get a nice uh, file manager over network Samba connection to the Steam Deck. It's fantastic. It really is cool once you get it in there just to be able to treat the Steam Deck as a, a separate drive on your network, just to drag and drop uh, the siloed games and everything. I got the fudge okay. No. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, people people love using this as an emulator. And I think I mentioned this before when I streamed the 512 model. I don't see myself really using this as an emulation device. Um, only because I kind of already have enough of those laying around uh, that I don't really need another emulation device. Uh, I, I, I really do like my Ambernic 351V, which we I think we were talking about last time you were in the stream. Uh, I already got that thing all nice and set up full of my stuff. And I don't know if I feel like doing that again. <laughs> I also have my arcade one up um, modded over here with a pie that I've got a lot of arcade games on. So I just have so many options. Plus my in general, I just have my, my little raspberry Pi systems packed away that I, I don't know. I, I have a handheld option. I have, I have, uh, a TV option. I've got so many options already. I'm just feeling like I needed to keep this thing. I don't know for the purpose it serves, which is more or less a portable Steam PC. Yeah, uh, no, I I hear you. I agree. A larger screen. I, I I it's hard to even. I have my Switch over there, but I have trouble going back to it now. It's it's crazy. This screen is just so much, it just feels bigger. I know people are complaining about the bezels. Uh, the bezels are pretty big on the Switch as well, unless you have the OLED model. But uh, I don't notice these bezels as much. The screen just seems like it's a little bigger. 
All right, so now it's saying installing the update. And honestly, you know, the 512 that I had in there, along with the, um, I don't know why we're back at the wel welcome screen again, but we do have, all right, here we go. We do have uh, the, the physical controls back, which is fantastic. Um, this is the part that's hard because I have to actually now here, what I can do is I think I have it on my iPad here. Do I? Yeah, I have Steam on my iPad. So I think I should be able to just sign in using that. Let me see. Uh, it's on another device, which is my phone. But I'm gonna move. Oh, it's on my phone. Jeez. Let's see. Two eight four three five. All right. This is a pain in the butt. Take a screenshot. All right, here we go. All right. Let's see if that works. There you go. That's pretty cool. I like that. So it should be signing me in. Welcome to Steam Deck. Take a tour of the device. Press any button. Continue. This is your Steam button. This is a quick access. This is the power. Volume. Do, do, do. Have fun. There you go. And now back to my, uh, here's my Steam Deck here. So my main screen. Move your further away. Let's see. Man, the quality of these YouTube live streams is terrible. Let me see if I can. Sorry, I'm doing this at an angle here. Maybe I'll make it a little easier to see. I don't know. Okay. Okay. So there we go. Internal drive. I don't know if you can see that. Probably not. Let's see if that helps. In any case, it says 935 free of 938 gigabytes. That's a very cool feeling to have. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get on the storage and uh, where's the options to? Format SD card. There you go. We're going to format the SD card. So the SD card I'm using is a uh, 512 Samsung. Pro Plus. It's supposed to be one of the best ones you can use your Steam Deck. And so far in my experience uh, of using it with the 512, it, it's been pretty good. I mean, uh, it's I, I haven't had any complaints. It seems to be pretty pretty snappy.
Hey, Shane, uh, do you want to pop a link in there to that video for Psycho? All right, so it looks like it's formatted. So let's go down to storage. And there's the SD card. Once again, unfortunately, it's going to be hard to see, but it's uh, 460 free, 468 gigs free. So I've got almost a terabyte and a half here. And see, here's the problem where it says other. That's that's uh, thanks to Shane for filling me this in. This is where the shader information is going to be. <laughs> you know what? Hold on. I might be able to. Let me see if I can just find it real quick. God forbid I interrupt to the deck deity over there. All right. Let's see. Do, do, do. Hold on, Psycho. Let me see if I can find it for you. Should have I think it's under my liked videos actually. Where are my liked videos at? I don't really know how. All right, let's see here. All right, here we go. Let's see if it allows me to put that in the chat. All right, Shane, I did your dirty work. Not only did I promote your channel, but I'm also giving a link directly to it. All right, so I think we're pretty much done here for now. Um, I'm just going to go into the settings and see if I can change some stuff up. Now, one of the things I was reading about is depending on the uh, SSD, that M2 that you put in there, uh, it can generate more or less heat. Uh, from what I understand, the, the storage size, though, overall shouldn't affect the battery life. Um, all you're doing is increasing the amount of storage. So um, I haven't heard anything to the contrary to say that it does anything to your um, battery life in that regard. But I do know certain brands, people were complaining that the... Uh, that's not it. Where is it? Is it General? system i know people were complaining that the heat can be a little overwhelming at, at times there it is general battery percentage all right a lot of good stuff on uh, on sale on steam a lot of these games i've double dipped on um 